we are looking at the unit circle for all four quadrants. You'll remember from last lesson that using the unit circle with a radius of 1 on the number plane, we found that sine of the angle is equal to the y coordinate of any point around the triangle. So this triangle gives us the example. Here is theta, the angle. Sine is opposite, which gives our y coordinate over uh, hypotenuse, which is 1. So it just simplifies to sine theta equals y. Cos of the angle equals x. And the other one was, of course, that tan of the angle equals sine theta over cos theta. If you don't remember those, go back to the previous video and have a look. Now, using these, we're going to extend the skills we learnt last lesson to all four quadrants. Just a reminder that you do need to be able to label the quadrants. Quadrant 1 is where we start with our acute angle, and then we go anti-clockwise in the same way that the angles get bigger. Quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So you do need to be able to label the ang uh, quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4. Now when we're working in quadrant 1, we have our standard right angle trigonometry. We have theta, the angle, and it's just everything is normal. Last lesson when we moved into quadrant 2, what we discovered was if we have an obtuse angle, such as this one here, there will be a matching acute angle over here at point P. And this angle here, because it matches sort of halfway here with that angle, that will let us find sine, cos, or tan of this larger obtuse angle. The way we found that angle was we got the supplement of this, let's call this one 130 degrees in there. The supplement of 130 degrees is this 50 degree angle here. And its sine values are the same, 130. We can refer to the 50 degree angle because its sine value, its y value, is the same. Its x value here, its cos, is the same but negative. And tan y over x or y over x is the same but negative for any angles over here. So what we're doing is we're saying what we really want is sine, cos, and tan of 130, but I know that I can get those by doing sine, cos, and tan of 50, of its reference angle. So for each quadrant, we need to be able to find the reference angle. Now for quadrant 1, the reference angle is just the angle itself. Just theta. If you're asked to find sine of 50 degrees, you just find sine of 50 degrees. Dead easy. In quadrant 2, we learned how to find the reference angle last lesson. It's 180 degrees minus the angle. That is, if my angle that I'm using is 130 degrees, 180 minus 130 is 50 and I can use 50 degrees to get my answers for 130 degrees. In these other ones, say I've got an angle um, around here at say 200 degrees. You know, that goes all the way around. 
have a look at where I'd get these same answers, this for y, this for x. It's horizontally, oh sorry, vertically opposite. What a silly word, horizontally opposite. Vertically opposite over here. This point here, this angle here, would give me the same answers, just off on the positives and negatives, as this angle of 200 degrees around here. So having a look at that, you can see it looks like well, about 30-ish degrees, something like that. How you find out what that angle is, this 200 degrees here minus 180 will swap me right round to there. So the reference angle that will work in quadrant 3 is the angle minus 180 degrees. So I did have 200 degrees minus 180, 20 degrees here will give me the same answer that I would get for my whole 200 degrees. So I can get sine, cos or tan of 200 degrees by using 20 degrees. Now we still have to talk about where the positives and negatives go because as we learnt last lesson, sine will give me the same answer up in the second quadrant, but cos and tan will give me a negative version. We'll go through why that is. And then of course we want the reference angle for this last quadrant and I'll actually just scoot down here because it's easy to see the diagrams. So the reference angles for the last quadrant, here you can see that if my angle was coming all the way around to there, I'll zoom in for you, that I'd get the same sine, cos and tan if I had this angle here. I'm always aiming for what's the angle that gives me the same answer up here in the first quadrant. And so obviously to get this angle out of all of that, this is 360 minus this really large angle that I've got here. So my reference angle in the fourth quadrant is 360 degrees minus the angle. Sorry, let's just position that. Now once we've worked out how to get the angle, so it's supplementary for quadrant two, out of 360 for quadrant 4 and the opposite angle by subtracting 180 for quadrant 3. We also need to know whether it's going to be positive or negative. Now in quadrant 1 all our ratios are positive. y is positive, x is positive, tan is positive divided by positive is a positive. All our ratios are positive, and there's a little mnemonic, ASTC, which I'll teach you, a little memory aid. A, all are positive. Around to the next one is S, sine is positive. And that means cos and tan are negative, because the x is in the negatives, so cos is negative, and obviously therefore tan is negative as well. Third quadrant, AST, tan is positive. Tan is positive here because I'm in the negatives for y and the negatives for x, and tan is y over x, so that's negative divided by negative is positive. And this last one, C, Cos is positive. And the memory aid to remember that if you want is just all stations to central. 
which if you catch the trains a lot, you'll know it says. It says I'm stopping here, 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 and then at all stations to central. So that will let you remember which ones are positive and which ones you have to make negative. And from this, I can get sine, cos, and tan for any angle from 0 round to 360. Now, it also lets us get the exact values. I would go to the unit circle page, which is linked on Darinet. We've already worked out the exact values for sine, cos, and tan for 0 and 90. Work them out for 180, 270, and 360, same as 0, and fill in your table. If you're not sure why these exact values are working, do feel free to let me know. In the next video, I'll go through the sort of questions that we might be asked to use this for.